Lowry. I praise God. December 11th, 2022. Here we are, almost had another year done. Seems awful quick. It's gone by awful quickly, just as it has been, because some of us still think we're 18 years old when we're not. Our mind says I'm still 20, but my body says, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, with the custodial work, it's a lot of walking. A lot of walking. You need, a, you need uh, good shoes. I have to go buy some shoes because my hood ones are warm right out. There's a lot of leg work. There's a lot of arm work. There's a lot of things that you got to think about when you walk into a classroom. You have to be prepared to do your job. It doesn't matter if you're a custodian or you're a mechanic or wherever that you're going to do a job, you should be prepared to go in. Some people will cry for an hour before they go to work because they don't like the job, like I used to do. <laughs> but when you go into work, you want to make sure you have your lunch, right? Sometimes you forget your phone, or we can't have a video, you forget your phone, right? Because, you know, that's, that's what people's life, a lot of them just can't seem to get away from that phone. I don't, I don't need a phone for anything. But you talk about being a servant of something, take a look at the phones when the kids' heads are always down looking at them. Who are they serving? You know, your whole life is in this small little box. Just a guy like the guy who invented the television set, he said he wished he'd never done it because he thought he was doing a world of service. But when he found out what has become of the TV, he, he, he wished he'd never invented it. That's what he told us. This man gave his heart to the Lord, realized that he needed God in his life. And he said he wished he'd never invented the television set. Tell the vision. Tell you what you're going to hear, what you're going to see. This is all controlled by this big conspiracy theory. So when you put your big tinfoil hat on, like mine's usually like this here. It's pretty big. They come up with a lot of conspiracy theories that people have already that people already know and people already agree with. Then you get the people that don't agree because they still think the, they still think the earth is flat. <laughs> you ever been a flat earther? Honestly believe that the earth is flat and they can prove it. Meanwhile, you get the guy who goes up in the outer space. I, I personally don't believe that anybody's been on the moon, but it was. You go down to space where this space shuttle is, or this uh, uh, where they have that big uh, uh, thing up there in the sky. You know what I'm talking about? What it is? You can see from there the Earth is not flat. So when you take a flat Earther up there, he would obviously see for himself that the world is not flat. The only thing that's flat is his head. Because he has no idea what he's talking about. These ladies guys will say I'm a flat earther. I believe that the earth is flat. Anyways. God is preparing us. But you have to be willing to be what? Prepare yourself for what is coming. God is calling his people. I don't have to tell you this. We've been talking and preaching about this kind of stuff. For the past 150, 2,000 years, if, if you want to go that far, even Jesus says, prepare yourself. Prepare your heart. Prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Because one day, God's going to say, bring my children home. And if you're not prepared to meet the Lord in the air, then you're going to stay here. And who knows what's going to happen? Yes, it's going to be a lot worse. Then the churches will be full, like I've told you before. People will be coming in here and saying, well, I won't be saying to me, but they'll say, when they bring up to your church, they'll say, why didn't you tell us the truth? And some of the pastors will be standing right up here crying because they never told the truth. I'll tell you why. Pastors get told to do by not only the congregation, because that's where the money comes from, right? 
their board of directors, whatever association that they belong to, instead of listening to one person, God up in heaven, who tells you everything. No? So instead of listening to all these people that know nothing, more interested in how much money they can get into their money basket here. Oh, you can't, you can't say that. You can't say that, Pastor, because the people won't like it. That's a little harsh. That's, that's not for today. Well, guess what's for today? Everything that's written in here is good for today. If God doesn't change, like the fashions of men, if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, now tell me if that's what the Bible says, no. Who are you to say that that is not relevant for today? A lot of Christians will say the Old Testament is not relevant today. A lot of it is. Now, if you're Jewish or Hebrew, well, it's a lot more to you. But the Christian, let me tell you what. Jesus never spoke of the New Testament, did he? Where did he speak from? The Old Testament. But when Jesus spoke, the New Testament was being written. Because there were scribes there. There was people who witnessed what Jesus did. They said that Jesus performed so much, he said that, that all the books in this world could not contain it. If you hide behind here, we have a, a Jewish Torah with the Ten Commandments on it. I think that's what's in there. That signifies that we believe not only in the New Testament, but the Old Testament is relevant to a Christian's life. Here we are in the book of Joel. Oh my goodness, it's the Old Testament. That's where we're going to go. Joel chapter 2. Oh Lord, don't speak out of there. Don't bring up Joel. Oh my God. Joel chapter 2. The terrible day of the Lord and the promise of the Holy Ghost. Doesn't that sound nice? This is God speaking to you, Christian, not only in Joel's time, which is around 400 years B.C., where Jesus was born. He was talking. God was speaking to us to prepare us for today. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And that speaks volumes right there. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after this, after it, even to the years of many generations. God is coming back with his righteousness. And he's going to judge this whole world. Nobody cares what you believe. I don't believe in God. God doesn't exist. Then you've got nothing to worry about, do you? Then why are you so bent on the sheep every time there's a preacher downtown talking? Preach. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people. Why are you so worried about what he has to say? If you don't believe him, leave the guy alone. But they get bent out of shape for absolutely nothing. Pretty soon, 
Everyone in this room knows that two plus two equals four. Amen, brother. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we all agree. Two plus two equals four. But pretty soon they're going to be telling you that's not true. Two plus two equals five. And once people start believing it, they're going to believe that two plus two equals five. But we all know that two plus two equals four. Just because somebody says it doesn't mean it's true. You know what's true? Right here in God's Word. So when God tells you there's a terrible day of coming, believe you me, there's a terrible day that's a coming. Yeah. God's going to describe it for us. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is of, is of the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them desolation, wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and, and the horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, they shall leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble even, uh, as a strong people set in battle array. You are not going to escape when God comes here to deal with the world. When God takes his holy, righteous way and he comes down here and says, all right, that's enough. Let me tell you what's going to happen. God is going to deal with this world. And you, as a Christian, if your heart is prepared, if you're prepared every single day to meet the Lord in your when God calls us home, will we go by the grave? Or will we go in the rapture? So shall you ever be with the Lord. But the people who are left here are not going to escape the wrath of God. God was full of wrath from the beginning in Noah's time because the people were sinful. So God says, okay, I think I've had just about enough of this. I'm going to destroy the whole world. And guess what? Noah preached to the people for how long? 150 years. But God was trying to prepare them for what was going to happen. 150 years. He preached the gospel unto these people saying, Make ye the way of the Lord. Talking about this terrible day. And they did not believe. Instead they stood there and they laughed at him like they do today. Huh. Oh. What an idiot, look at this, look at this pool. Building a great big boat on top of this big hill here. What a dipstick. But when it started raining, and not just a little drizzle, it downpoured. And all of a sudden the grounds opened up and the water started coming up from the ground. Did you know Earth is made up mostly of Water. This has got to come from somewhere. Maybe God melted the polar I mean, Arctic, Antarctic, and Arctic. Maybe He melted them, and all of a sudden there they were. Who knows? I don't know. But there's enough water to cover all the mountains on this world. And then when people saw that they were in trouble, then they cried unto the Lord and says, Open up the door. Now, Noah could have said, not by the hair of my chinny, chin, chin. He didn't say that. He says, I didn't close the door and I cannot open it. You know who closed that door? God himself. Took that door and went, who? You had your chance. I've been telling you for the past 150 years to prepare ye the way of the Lord. You didn't take heed. You didn't listen. You hated me. 
Yet God gave them everything. And God destroyed them all. Animals included. Except for the ones that were on the ark. And they weren't male and male, like some people would believe. They were male and female. That's how God designed it from the beginning. He destroyed everything. Because of what? Unbelief. Is it worse today than it was in the days of Noah? I would say so. But yet God still gives us grace every day. And people will say, Lord, you know it's the only time people actually talk to God is when they're in trouble? Some life-threatening comes on the common way and all of a sudden everybody knows who God is all of a sudden? God still listens. God still listens to their prayer. God still loves them. But that's up to you him to decide because it's his righteousness. It's his holiness. So they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall, they shall march every one of his, uh, in his own ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust them on another. They shall walk on every one his own path. That's what they do today. And they will fall upon a sword, and they shall not be wounded. You talk about that in the book of Revelation. People are going to be wanting to kill themselves, and they can't do it. People will fall upon swords and do all sorts of things to try and kill themselves to escape the wrath to come. And God's going to say, da, 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 da. that's not going to happen on my watch. And they won't be able to do it. What does it say there? When they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. What makes you think you're going to escape Almighty God? Because you wouldn't listen. Because you wouldn't prepare your heart for home. Do you want to stay here? Is that what you want? No. I'm just getting started. Sorry, I'm a little past time. Let's just read on. Just a lot. I gotta read this whole thing. So the earth shall quake before them. And the heavens shall tremble. It's verse 10. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice. Before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong. That executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great. And very terrible. And who can abide it? Therefore also know, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Shows me that God still loves them. Still give them a chance, right? And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God with a big G That's right. for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him to do evil God did not want to destroy the world in Noah's time God did not want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> And their roundabout area. But God had no choice because of his righteousness. Because the people just wouldn't listen. Said, so Who knoweth if he will return and repent 
and leave a blessing behind you, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify it, at fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, hear it. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Ooh, you're not gonna like this one, a lot of your preachers today. Take stock here. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? 